Hello everyone, welcome to SIUK India webinar. Thank you for joining us today. We are now live with Nottingham University. Today we have Lucy, Tim, Alec, Yikun, Jess and more with us who will let us know more about this special webinar session. Please feel free to post all the questions in the chat box on the right. We will answer all the questions after the presentation is over. So let's start. Over to you, Lucy, or Mo, just so like whoever wants to go first. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Debika, for the introduction. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, wherever you are joining us uh, today from. My name is uh, Mohamed Al-Mugrabi. I'm an associate professor at the University of Nottingham and the current director of student recruitment for the Faculty of Engineering. Um, it's uh, my pleasure today to be joined by three of my academic colleagues from three different departments. Um, and you will get to hear from them very shortly um, about their subject areas and their courses and the range of courses they offer within their individual departments. Before I hand over to them, I'd like um, just to introduce the, the session and give you a little bit um, of a flavor of what the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Nottingham is all about. One of the first questions I normally get asked uh, when I'm meeting potential students, um, speaking to agents, counselors, or our current students is, what is a Nottingham engineer? What is a Nottingham architect? And it's something that is close to my heart. I, I, I feel honored that I did both of my degrees, my undergraduate and my PhD here at the University of Nottingham. So I got to actually experience what a Nottingham engineer is all about. And for me, a Nottingham engineer is someone who's ready to start their job after they graduate from the University of Nottingham. We sometimes underestimate the fact that our students only spend one year with us and in their lifetime that is nothing. You know, one from 80 years or one from 90 years, that is a very small amount of time. So what we think about is how can we make sure to step the student towards fulfilling their potential within that one year if they're doing a PhD, which what this session is about. But also, even if you're doing an undergrad or a PhD with us, three or four years is nothing compared to your whole life. And for me, it's all about how can we take an individual who joins us as an undergraduate student, as a master's student, and how can we transform them and make them ready for life after the university. And that's why we have very strong emphasis on our placement teams, our career support teams, and accessing those even after you graduate from the University of Nottingham. Without further ado, I will hand over to uh, my first colleague, um, who's from the Department of Architecture and Built Environment, Tim Heath, to introduce himself and take us through the first section of today's session. Over to you, Tim. Thank you, Mo. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. And we're ready to go. Great. Hopefully you can all see that. OK, um, so, well, thank you again uh, for attending today. Um, it's my pleasure just to give you a, a sort of quick introduction to studying at postgraduate level within the Department of Architecture and Built Environment. Um, so I'm going to focus on our Master of Architecture and our MSc programmes that we offer. Um, just very briefly introducing myself. Um, I'm a professor of architecture and urban design. I'm also the director for the postgraduate programmes within our department, as well as being the course director for one of the MR programmes that I'm going to tell you about in a few minutes. Um, and like Mo, I also studied for certainly my postgraduate education at, at Nottingham. So I've been at Nottingham a long time now as a student and as an academic. Within the department, we have four different Master of Architecture programmes. Um, I won't read these, you can read them for yourself, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more about each of them in a, in a few minutes. And we also have four different MSc programmes. And again, I'll give you a short introduction to these in a, in a few minutes. Firstly, just to quickly introduce the department. Um, we have quite a special location within the University Park campus. Um, it's a beautiful parkland setting. And we have a range of both historic and contemporary buildings, which our students enjoy. Um, we're very much a research-led creative learning environment. Um, you know, most of our students are studying on quite creative programs. And we have nearly a thousand students at undergraduate and at postgraduate level. So it's quite an exciting and dynamic environment within which to study. In terms of why you might want to study um, either architecture or building engineering at Nottingham, 
Um, I think there's a lot of reasons, really. We're consistently ranked a top five department in the UK in terms of architecture or building. And we have a really excellent professional reputation. So our graduates are very highly sought after. We do have a, a quite a diverse range. I've just shown you briefly the eight different programs, a diverse range of master's programs that are all internationally recognized. We have great location I've just shown you and, and really good facilities in which to study. Also, all of our students have very close supervision from both academic and also professional experts that come in from industry to work alongside our students. Also, all of our programmes prepare students for advanced level standing in either practice or industry. And, and in addition, many of our um, postgraduate students go on to study for PhDs, either with us or, or at other universities. And very much we see this as a, a good pathway to PhD study in the future. I think there's some other key reasons as well. I think we will introduce you to a lot of advanced knowledge and important professional skills, but equally, I think from a more sort of social and personal development point of view, the opportunity to experience new cultures, visit new places, I think particularly within architecture and built environment disciplines is really important. And I don't think you should underestimate the importance of building up new international friendships and potential future collaborators as well when you move into your professional careers uh, during your study with us. And I think importantly as well, it's just worth stressing that all of our master's students when they graduate are eligible for a two year post study work visa, which makes creates better opportunities for finding employment in the UK, which I think is uh, an interesting prospect for many of our graduates. The programmes themselves, um, I've only got time to give you a very brief introduction to them, but we have on the four MR programmes, we have around 60 students in total coming from a wide range of different countries around the world. And similarly, the academic staff that teach you also come from very different parts of the world with different expertise and so on. And that obviously who you are taught by very much depends on the particular programme or the options that you take uh, when you're with us. The four programmes themselves are all 12 months full time study. So split into three semesters, two semesters of taught modules and summer where uh, they will work on a dissertation uh, project. The Master of Architecture in Architecture Design is um, usually the programme that has the most students on of our MR programmes. It's very multidisciplinary, it's very flexible, so you can choose either to specialise in key areas. So if you're interested more in green building design or um, sustainable design, urban design, tall building design and so on, you can choose to specialise or you can choose from a range of different options and keep a much more open um, selection of modules through your study. And as you can see here, just from one of the studios, the sort of diverse range of students that, that do study with us. All of the students on this program are coming from an architecture background, so they all have very strong design skills when they join us. <clears throat> the Architecture and Sustainable Design program, um, this one is very much focused on green building and designing more energy efficient, sustainable buildings. Um, it focuses, it's, it's, sorry, it builds upon a lot of the research that's done in the department and is becoming increasingly important within the profession globally as we try to deal and tackle with issues such as global warming and climate change and the impact that the built environment can have on that. Students do a lot of modeling, testing and so on as part of the design approach to improve uh, their designs. The third of the programs is our Master of Architecture in uh, Architecture Design and Build. And this is a very much a hands-on uh, project-based um, program where students will actually design uh, and construct, um, which are skills that a lot of architects lack through their normal education. So it's proving increasingly, unpopular, uh, increasingly popular for students to start and develop those skills. And this is built around some projects that we've been doing for a number of years. Uh, in designing and actually constructing uh, kindergartens for poor communities in South Africa. And you can see a lot more about that, those projects on our website. So a lot of designing, modeling, fabricating, testing, and so on, and using different um, fabrication equipment and tools to actually construct the projects. Final Master of Architecture program is Sustainable Urban Design. This is the one that I lead, um, which again builds upon a lot of internationally recognized research that we've been doing in this area for a long period of time. It's very much a vocational course, 
although it still also provides a good basis for further research as a PhD student and so on, as well as moving into uh, practice. This particular program is very interdisciplinary. So we have students from architecture backgrounds, urban planning backgrounds, landscape design, and actually other uh, built environment related uh, disciplines. So it's quite a nice mix of students on the program. And on that program, we focus at the sort of broader scale of the city down to the sort of public realm of streets and squares down to the building scale as well. So it's quite a holistic approach to thinking about architecture. Through all of our MR programs, we, we really feel there's a lot of importance on learning on location. So we do site visits um, as well as tutorials and workshops and presentations in the classrooms. So we do like to get students out and show them things in, in, in the real cities and so on. The MSc programs, <clears throat> excuse me, as I said, again, we have four programs, same sort of structure as the MR programs over three semesters um, with a research dissertation in the summer. Um, again, similar number of students, usually about 50 students on the four MSc programs, again, coming from different parts of the world and again, taught from staff uh, with different expertise from different international backgrounds, which again, we think is really important as we move into a more sort of global society. First program is the MSc in Building Performance Engineering. So this very much focuses on things like building physics, building simulation, looking at different sort of technologies, um, things like energy and the environment, um, BIM, building information management, uh, and, and doing this through exploring sort of research projects and so on. And there's also a lot of training that's useful for students as they go back into industry and back into practice. We also use uh, creative energy homes. This is a series of houses, but on our own campus where we uh, students can actually get involved in research and testing to see how technologies are working um, in real applications on that particular program. Our MSc in Sustainable Building Technology. This, as the title suggests, looks at much more at how sustainable energy technologies are integrated with buildings. And it very much brings together sort of both the sort of design and technological aspects of that particular program. Again, a lot of testing and modeling on this. This attracts students, some from an architectural background, but many others from different engineering backgrounds as well to come and study on the program. Introduces students to a lot of different softwares as well that enable them to assess uh, the performance of, of buildings um, and influence the design of new buildings. Third program, Renewable Energy and Architecture. Again, the title suggests it focuses on renewable energy technologies and how these are integrated with architecture to improve the comfort for users within buildings um, and also um, uh, achieves climate and energy savings as well. The final program the, is the MSc in Sustainable Energy and Entrepreneurship. This is a quite a unique program. It's a joint program we teach with the business school. Um, so there's a mixture of built environment and business type modules for students that might be interested in going to more business oriented careers. Um, and again, half of the modules are in each of those uh, departments. And then the, the, the summer sort of research project slope, um, stroke dissertation is conducted with supervisors from both departments on that. In terms of just being, just to sort of finish, again, just to tell you a few, very quickly, a few unique things about being a postgraduate student within our department. Um, we have a lot of student presentations where we encourage students from different programs to come and come and watch and listen and learn from different students taking different modules. Um, we do, particularly on the EM art programs, we do have a lot of field trips and site visits where we get students out, as I mentioned earlier. There's also a very strong sort of social side as well, where students are introducing each other to different cultures and festivals and things from their own countries. We also really encourage our students to submit for prizes and awards, international prizes and awards. We think it's a really important aspect of building their CV and getting international recognition for the work that they're doing with us. And we've had a lot of successes over the years in competitions. And finally, just to at the in the end of the summer term, we have a big sort of celebration event where we have end of year awards. You can see this is in our department. Um, we have a ceremony. We have a big exhibition of student work, almost to celebrate the the successes of the year and all the hard work the students have achieved. Which is sort of partly a formal event, but also partly a social event for all the students to come together from the different programs. And I'm going to finish there, but there'll be opportunity to ask me some questions at the end. And I thank you for listening.
Okay, I think I take over from there. So if I share my screen. Okay, and I think that follows quite naturally um, from Tim's presentation. So my name is Alec Marshall. I'm in the Department of Civil Engineering and I'm the MSc course director. So I'll take a few moments to go through the offering that we have within civil engineering. Oh. So we have three courses in the Department of Civil Engineering, three MSc courses. They are the MSc in Civil Engineering, Structural Engineering, and Transportation Infrastructure Engineering. So three different, but um, kind of similar flavor of um, MSc courses. And I'll go through the details of, of those three courses in a moment. Um, I'll mention, um, following on from what Tim said, um, these are all one-year courses. They're all here at the University of Nottingham um, University Park campus, which um, is a, a lovely place to live and work. I can say from experience, I'm not from the UK, I'm from Canada, and I have uh, been here in Nottingham for about 12 years now. It's a very enjoyable place to, uh, to call home. Um, the course, um, similar to uh, what Professor Heath mentioned, is a 12-month course, so you would do your top modules in the autumn and spring semesters, and then again, do your dissertation within the summer semester. Um, click to the next one. Um, we are well recognized globally in civil engineering for the research and the teaching that we do. So each MSc student uh, can take advantage of the excellent staff that we have here in the Department of Civil Engineering. And you would be able to benefit from working personally with one member of academic staff. So the, the way it works is that at the beginning, uh, when you're introduced to the course, you would give us some selections of what your interests are. And then based on those or on that information, I would go through a process of pairing you up with a member of academic staff who would then be your personal tutor for the year. And you would work with that personal tutor on your dissertation, your research-based projects, but also that personal tutor would be there looking after your academic side, your well-being side, a point of contact for you to make sure that you progress through the course as well as possible. Um, the MSc in Civil Engineering, uh, I'll start with that one. That is essentially one what well, fits best to students who aren't necessarily, haven't necessarily chosen the specific area within civil engineering that they want to focus on. So this offers a lot of breadth of opportunity. Um, it gives the same um, types of skills throughout uh, all of our courses. So the, the knowledge, the experience, the ability to go through and critically analyze problems and apply fundamental understanding to solve these real world problems. Um, but this course in particular gives you that breadth of opportunity because you can select from subject areas within structures or geotechnics, hydraulics, or as you can see here in the video that was playing, we have a dam collapse. Uh, and this is within some of our experimental facilities in the lab here in Nottingham. You can look at geospatial engineering, surveying, transportation infrastructure, asset management. You can pick and choose from a variety of the subject areas that we have on the offer. Um, and there are also opportunities for developing your transferable skills. We have our dissertation-based project. And alongside of that, there are opportunities to do presentations to your peers, uh, developing your writing skills, your communication skills, presentation skills, all of that is integrated within the course. If we look specifically, I won't take too long. I, I want to direct you, if you're looking at specifics for module content, uh, class content, please do refer to the websites, a quick online search for Nottingham MSc Civil Engineering or any of the uh, MSc titles, you'll be able to find this information. Uh, the point here I wanted to get across was the breadth of modules, of taught modules that we have on offer. So the compulsory um, classes that you have to take are 70 credits out of a, a hundred and, um, 180, sorry, skip there, um, which are your dissertation based modules. So your research methods and project proposal is preparing you for your dissertation project, which would happen within the summer. And then the range of modules here that you can see from 
cover a wide area of subjects related to sustainable construction, railways, pavements, structural, wind design, geotechnical analysis, coastal engineering, infrastructure, uh, fluid mechanics, surveying, um, tall buildings, bridges, traffic. So hopefully you'll see that um, there's a lot on offer there, which can cater to a lot of different interests. And you'll be able to take that and really further or integrate it into your dissertation based project. And just to give an idea of some of the specifics here, um, this I took yesterday from the titles of our current students working on the projects. Uh, these are images of the supervisors. So at the, the top, we have Prof uh, Dr. Barbara Turnbull. She's working on, or with a student, who's looking at mitigation methods to protect infrastructure from avalanches, which is quite an interesting aspect of civil engineering. Uh, demonstrates again the, the breadth of expertise and the areas that civil engineers get in, involved with. Luke Prendergast is working with a student on structural health monitoring for bridges, and Wally Tizani has a student looking at solutions or sustainable solutions for uh, the construction industry. I'll move on from the civil engineering MSc to the MSc in structural engineering, and this one obviously is for individuals who are really focused and have made the decision that a structural engineering career is the way forward for them. The, the focus obviously has a lot of fundamental theory um, involved in it that is really important to be able to really analyze and understand the systems, the structures that we all rely on in, in society. But there is a real focus in this MSc uh, about the practice and that comes in a variety of ways. Um, in particular, they look at using advanced software and computer modeling, and these are techniques that are um, preparing students and giving them the tools that they will need to work in this industry. Um, and I think as previously mentioned by Mo, what we're very good at and what we can demonstrate is that our graduates are really prepared, well prepared to go into a career in industry. Um, so that is a very seamless process after graduation. The, the module has 160 credits of compulsory courses, which relate to, again, the dissertation based, the, the first two bullet points there, um, and then focusing in on the structural design and the application of design, um, also including dynamics and wind engineering, structural analysis, bridge engineering, and full building design. There are also 20 credits of optional modules available. So this gives some variety to the students, some options um, to the students, and they can pick from selection of modules, for example, uh, fluid dynamics, surveying, infrastructure asset management, sustainability and construction, and managing infrastructure. A couple of examples here. We've got one student working with Dr. John Owen doing some experiments in the wind tunnel that we have here looking at flutter phenomena and structural systems. We have a student being supervised by Dr. Georgia Thermu, who's looking at geopolymer concrete to reduce CO2 emissions uh, within materials used in the construction industry. And then another image, uh, sorry, another student, uh, I don't have the image of Paul, um, but he's supervising a student looking at how they can reduce embodied carbon at the design stage, um, trying to optimize designs to, uh, or um, modify designs to try to reduce embodied carbon. Finally, I'll go through the MSc in Transportation Infrastructure Engineering. This one is unique in the UK in that it focuses both on road and rail infrastructure. And it goes through the wide spectrum of subjects related to transportation infrastructure, um, right from the materials that are used within um, the industry, uh, how we understand, and then how we design systems for use of those materials. And then it looks right through the life cycle of those materials. So how do we model the deterioration of those materials due to traffic, for example, or the environment? How do we assess the condition? How do we fit that assessment within some life cycle assessment procedure? And then how can we increase life cycles um, to make our design solutions, our materials more sustainable for the, for the end user? 
the the MSC has 180 credits of compulsory uh, modules. So there are no optional modules in this case. The first two bullets there are the dissertation base. So they are common with the other two, but these projects would obviously be focused in on transportation related subjects. And then the content of the modules relate to traffic, infrastructure asset management, sustainability and construction, railways, um, managing infrastructure systems, pavement design materials, infrastructure engineering, and design um, focused module. And a few examples, we've got how to improve asphalt mixtures using polymer modified bitumen, that's supervised by Professor Gordon Airy. Um, Dr. Alvaro Garcia does work related to self-healing asphalt, so he's got a student looking at how they can use cooking oils within self-healing asphalt, which is quite an interesting uh, topic. And then Dr. Nick Tom is, has a student doing a project on use of crumb rubber as a modifier in asphalt concrete mixtures. So hopefully that gives an idea of the, the flavor of things that our students do and our staff uh, work on. Where do our students go after graduation? Uh, that's again, quite a, a wide, a ranging um, set of disciplines and areas that we go into. Some examples here, we had a recent graduate, Jessica Clavel, who's now working at, um, back in France at the National Airport Engineering Service as a project manager. Twana Haji was one of my MSc students a couple of years ago. He's a geotechnical engineer working here in the UK. Yang Lu is now back as an assistant professor working in China. And Frank Hua is, uh, was, had gone back to Ghana to work as a municipal roads engineer. And I understand he's now a research fellow here back at the University of Nottingham. So he's come back into a research um, sector. So that's all I, I have to present. I'm uh, happy to answer any questions at the end. And I've got, again, my contact details here. So please do feel free to send me an email if you have any follow-up questions. Thank you very much, Alec. Before Yishin start, we just had a number, um, a bit of um, sound uh, coming in a bit muffled there, Alec. So I don't know whether it was you, Yishin. Can you try speaking? Um, right. Can I hear me? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it might have been um, Alec. Maybe your mic um, had a little bit of a, of a muffled sound. So when we'll pick that up when we right. when we are answering the questions. But yeah, Yishin, your your connection. Seems right, okay. To my turn. I let, I can share my screen. Perfect. Okay. Over uh, to you. Yishin. Right. Okay. Second. Right. Uh, can you see my screen? Perfect. Etienne, thank you. Right. Okay. So, right. Let's just start with the uh, first slide. So, uh, I'm in the first slide or which slide are you in? Lucy, can you tell me which slide are you in? Itchen, you're on the MS. Oh, you're moving around now. Right, okay, okay. Right, okay. The first That's the beginning. Uh, right, okay. Uh, uh, my name is Yichen Zhu. I'm the course director for uh, electronic communication computer engineering from Department Department Electrical Electrical Engineering. Right. So today I'm gonna uh same slide. Right, what I can talk about. First one, I can talk about why uh, study for our MS course with us. Then uh, more I'm gonna uh, show you the detail uh, for the two entity course. First one, which is the electrical electronic engineering. Second one, which is the electronic communication computer engineering. So in, when I go through the two course, I will show you what you need to do when you are in Nordic High in terms of cost structure, module choice, right? Also, I'm gonna show you a calendar that, you know, uh, in terms of semester, when, doing what, right, okay. Right, so uh, 
you see uh, in, in this slide, we show you two points here, right? So in terms of our department ranking, we are ranking 15 uh, in Guardian League table uh, this year, right? Uh, so which is a quite good ranking. Then second one I like to uh, uh, tell, which is uh, we have a uh, very, very powerful list, uh, group, which is the uh, power electron machine control. In this group, actually we have a, a very big building, brand new building. So in, in this group, we cover a lot of research, mainly they focus on air space uh, uh, in the industry, right? So they have a very strong power electron uh, research. Uh, actually, UK power electron center, which is located in, the, in, in Nottingham, right? So, so there's a lot going on. We also, we can take up a lot of PhD students uh, uh, for their research after they um, study, or we, we can recruit from, uh, from the world, right? Right. Then in this slide, uh, I show you all the emission code we offer from, from our department. First one, which is the advanced electrical electrical engineering with the extended research. So in this code, which is quite different from other code, you know, uh, we know most of the code emission code in UK with one year, right? But this code actually two years. So the idea is, you know, uh, we we created it called uh, two years ago. Actually, we have a only have a two very uh, strong still from India, right? So for this course, uh, the purpose of this course, which is we we know in India, if we done one year course in UK, they are not able to go on PhD study in India. Also, another second reason, which is we also you know we have a, a lot of them from come from China. In China, if you have the one year course, they might have, a, in terms of they, they try to get the state uh, company, they may have a kind of restriction, right? So that's the purpose we try to see two, uh, two year course. So in the two year course, first year, uh, you're just doing total module, right? Uh, very similar to the other course. Then second year, we're gonna use the entire year to do a, a quite big research project, right? Then second one, which is the electric engineering, which is for the electro, right? So I'm not gonna go for a detail here, right? The next two, which is the quite generic one, particularly for the electro, electronic engineering, right? Uh, we, we cover electrical, also electronic. Then next one, which is the, uh, I look after the uh, course, which is electro, electronic computer, computer engineering, right? I'm gonna show you uh, uh, those module we're gonna learn in here, right? Then we call the uh, 34, which is the, uh, in terms of STEM population, they are quite small. So I'm not gonna get uh, further detail here. Right. So these are electrical, electrical engineering, also with the two year uh, master, right? So basically they share the same total module, but for the two year one, as like I say, they have a one year for their research project, right? So these are, uh, module, some of module they're going to choose. Then that one, which is the uh, electronic communication, computer engineering. So again, we have a module uh, in here, most of the key module show here, but next two slides are going to show you a bit more detail how you can select your module uh, choice when you are here, right? So in here, uh, this is a core structure for electronic communication, computer engineering. So you see, in the first part, we have a three components, three module, which is composite. So basically, everyone going to choose this three module, uh, no choice, right? So first one, which is a, uh, a new module created, I think, two years ago, right? So basically, for this module, we're going to provide a lot of skill or, you know, or, or some knowledge, you know, we feel, you know, we, we have still from all over the world, some still they have a very strong in this area, but not necessarily for in the other area. So in this module, we're gonna provide kind of a cover to allow you get those things you're missing in your UG study, right? Also in this module, we're gonna provide opportunity allow the trained interpretation uh, like PT or uh, post presentations, right? Then second module, which is the uh, uh, research, uh, 
advanced in unit research project organization. So this is to try uh, training you how to get ready for your summer project. Right, then we have a missing project, right? Then, then the first group in here, first group, this, you know, this is not complete module, but, but this are level four module. We, we like your choosing module if you can, but this, you know, this is level four MC level, right? But you don't have to choose all the module. Then if you're not choose all this module, then next group, we have a some level three module. So this module, you may done some module in your UG study, but you, you even, you have done one, but you want to, then you can choose here, but there's a limitation. Maximum we can choose in here, which is the uh, 30 grade, right? Right, so this is a calendar for any study. Uh, as we, we know, we got a one year, in turn the um, one year course, or the first year of the two year course, right? So we start from here, September, then we have a semester one doing module learning, then we go event, right? Then we start second semester. Then uh, just the, uh, in the beginning of the second semester, we try doing project choice. So for your sum project. So we, we, we need to make a choice first, okay, based on your interest. So what we do, we're gonna provide a list of projects we can offer. Then you can choose based on your interest, what you want to do, what you want to do in the future, right? Then, Second semester, we carry on module learning. Then immediately after your exam of second semester, we can start our full-time project, okay? So which is three months. Then by, we end up with the next September. So after your submission, then you within the entire uh, 12 months, right? So so total for this one year, we 180, right? So you see for total module, we have 120, then project 60, right? Right, then all our course, which is uh, uh, created by IET, uh, except one code, which is the two year code, we haven't done that because for IET creation, they only renew every five years. So we're going to uh, get uh, a credit for the two year for the next, uh, for in the next IET visit. So we'll be in another two years time, right? So, so the uh, accessible code, all the code are are it pretty at the moment? Right, so uh, our MCD comes from all over the world. So we got a very uh, big community. So we got a different culture. So uh, we can share culture, you know, when you're studying. So um, yeah, okay. So that's uh, my end of a talk. So final slide, we just, I just show you our PGT key contact. So basically we have a, uh, Dr. Action, which is the PGD uh, director, look after all the course in the in the department. Then myself, I I look after the uh, ECCE, which is electronic communication, computer unit course. Right. So we got a uh, telephone number and the email. So by the way, you know today's presentation shall be done by Dr. Chong, but he not here at the moment. Okay. So that's all for my talk. Lucy, back to you. Thanks, Etienne. Thanks, everybody. Deepika will be happy to answer any questions if you want to read any out that we've not answered in the chat. Lucy, do you want me to read out the questions and then we can answer them? That'd be great. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, thank you so much for such a knowledgeable presentation. We are now moving towards the Q&A session. Over to you. Thanks, Deepika. Uh, okay, so I want to apply for elect electrical and electronic engineering graduation and what yeah. are the entry requirements? Right, okay. So, uh, uh... Let, let me answer the question. So basically for the electrical, electrical engineering, uh, we, we have a, a two one intern academic requirement. They also really quite easy, which is, easy, which is a, a 
highest uh, 6.0. So I'm not quite sure uh, what you can uh, require in, in India, but in the UK, we do the two one. Is it answer question? That answer Thank to me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is, can I enroll in your master's program with an undergraduate degree in electrical engineering without work experience? So that's for you again, Eugene. Uh, with, uh, right, okay. So we are not, you know, work experience not, not compulsory. Okay, so of course we, we like to have some, some work experience, but it's not, uh, not, not essential. But mainly we can look at your your performance in terms of your module study, your, your key degree. Okay, so which is fine. Thanks, Ethan. Yes, some of our business courses do require you. If you're doing an right, MBA, okay. you need to have done some, um, quite a lot of work experience. Actually, I think it's a minimum of about five years, but no, our um, MSc courses within the Faculty of Engineering, none of them require that work experience. Yes, that's right. Any more questions, Yes. Yeah, so next question, do you have, information on average earnings post completing your master's in architecture engineering and any placement opportunities over to you Tim. i um I, I don't actually have average earning information i'm afraid but i do know on the um those msc programs particularly the ones in sort of sustainability uh, environmental design environmental engineering there are, there's more jobs than there are actual graduates at the moment it's such a growing area um, both in the UK and internationally. So they are very highly sought after and employers are competing very strongly to get the best graduates. So it's, it's, it's a very, there are very good job prospects in those areas. Thanks, Jim. Um, so the next question should have been answered in the chat. So the deadline for the 2022 intake and the scholarship link should be posted in the chat already. Yes, so usually, um, the, you can apply up until maybe July. It's really in terms of time to get your visa. But um, there is about a four. We allow, we ask you to allow four weeks after application to get your offer. So if you were looking at applying for one of those scholarships, then now is really the time to apply and within the next sort of week or so to ensure you have that offer, which you need to then apply for those two scholarships that you're eligible for. So if you are thinking about that and you're requiring a scholarship, please do look at putting your application in quite quickly. Thank you. So the next question is, uh, does admissions or masters require 16 years of education or 15, or is 15 years fine? I think in terms of education in terms of years, I think we just need that bachelor's degree. I think that's what we look at. Yeah, so it's just, your performance in your undergraduate degree will allow you to enter onto that master's programme. Okay. Next question, um, is a one year's master's, oh, sorry, I missed one. Um, if I apply for the September, January intake, how long will it take for the university to reply? So yes, it is about, we say allow four weeks and really that's so that our admissions team can look at your application. If they're un unsure whether you meet the requirements, sometimes it is referred to our school so actually one of the academics you've met here today would be the one to then look at your application, make sure you've got that um, correct background to enable you to go on to that degree programme. And um, that means that we say four weeks time you should be receiving an offer. Thank you. So the next question is, is a one year's master's programme in engineering good enough for the placement opportunities? Um, there is a postgraduate placement opportunities team who can um, support you in finding work. And we also have Unitemps, who are um, an agency that help students find work. You are able to work alongside your degree and your visa allows you to work for about 20 hours a week. But we do sort of say um, that actually... You, you obviously want to be concentrated on your studies, so you may only want to think about perhaps working in your holidays. Um, hopefully that answers that question. Thank you. Um, okay, next question. Are there any summer courses available uh, for electrical engineering to gain practical knowledge in this field? If so, how can we apply? Right, okay, so let me uh, give a, uh, uh, 
the answer to your question. Of, so uh, usually, you know, I mean, before pandemic, Lucy, we did have a sub course, right? So run by our department, which is a uh, well received, okay, you know, very successful. But unfortunately, we have a pandemic. So I believe we we will we will run some group again, you know, when we get it over. Lucy. I'm hoping. I am hoping so. I am hoping so, Ethan. Um, mm. So um, we tend to rotate around the department. So um, there's no firm plans, but I will let everybody know, uh, and certainly the SIUK know if we are running one in the future. And that would tend to be a two weeks from school in June, July time. Thank you. So next question. Uh, do you accept students after five years of study gap, a five year study gap? Um, Alec, do you want to answer this? I don't think it makes any difference in terms of our master's qualifications. We recognise that work experience. We've recognised your earlier qualifications. So work experience is only a good thing. It's certainly not a problem. Unless any of the academics want to come in on that. Yeah, I don't have anything to disagree with. I think the, the academic requirement is there. And I think we would look favourably if somebody's coming in with some practical work experience it gives them some focus in terms of what they want to gain from the from the course. Thanks, Alec. Thank you. And right, next one. Um, what IELTS score do I need for a civil engineering MSc course? And are we allowed to do internships during the course? Um, well, the IELTS are, what is it, six, I think? It is, it is six with a minimum of 5.5 .5 in all the elements. Yes, um, and I think the internship was kind of covered in a previous question. Um, based on visa requirements, students are allowed to do a maximum of 20 hours per week. Um, but uh, you do need to consider as a student, you have a, quite a, a good workload, a, academic workload. So you have to get that balance right when you're here. Um, so there, there's nothing stopping you from doing work outside of the university or within the university sometimes, um, but uh, it, it's uh, very much based on the individual circumstances. Thanks, Alec. The next question, um, what is the scholarship criteria? Will it get considered automatically? So I think, was this one answered again in the comments? Don't think so. so there are two application processes, one for the South Asia Postgraduate Excellence Award and one for the Developing Solutions um, Scholarship. So you would have to do, once you had your offer, you'd have to do two separate applications for those. And there are a number of awards to be made. Um, but what will happen is then those scholarships will be ranked in terms of the answers to those questions. And then the top, um, depending on how many students we have apply, those top ones would get the scholarship. So. Um, there are lots of scholarships available. Yep. Okay, next question. Uh, hello, please tell, tell us about the admission process for the master's course. What is the average age or stu of students attending your master's in architecture or civil engineering? And what about the post-study work visa? So I can, I can respond on architecture. I, I, <clears throat> I've never actually tried to work this out, but my my guess based on my experience would be that the average age of the Master of Architecture students would be somewhere between 23 to 27. Um, most of them come one or two years after completing their undergraduate degrees. Um, that said, we do have we do have a few students who come after more years of experience. So there, there are some that are perhaps late 20s, early 30s, and occasionally one or two that are older than that. But the average is around 23 to 27, I would suggest. Uh, what else was the other one? Post-study work visa. I mean, my understanding of that is that all of our uh, master's level graduates are eligible to apply for a two-year post-study work visa. And if they successfully complete and pass their, their programs, those, those visas are automatically awarded subject to them applying. That's my understanding. So it's actually simpler than, sorry, yeah, Mo, do you want to on, say that? <laughs> no, go on, go on, Lucy, go on. So yes, it's simpler than that. So actually, you have the right to remain in the UK for two years after completing your master's. So that's great for the students because it gives them that time to get some 
work experience in the UK and then potentially even apply for the graduate route visa after that. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's, um, the requirement to remain doesn't even require you to have a job within that two years. It just allows you to search for a job. So is there anything you want to add on that, Mo? No, no. <laughs> I was just going to say it makes it a lot easier for employer, employers to employ you as well because that, that they've not got to start that process initially when you start the job with them. So That's it fine. makes working in the UK a lot easier. Yeah, before we hand over to Alex to speak about the average age within the civil engineering, I think, yeah, so um, in in short, and this is not visa advice, it's that um, companies um, who employ international employees require to sponsor them. And I think um, the ease of those two years is um, is that, you know, your placements, et cetera, could be in smaller companies, for example. Um, okay. But yeah, um, after that, you will need to be sponsored, I think is the short answer, but please seek visa advice for that. Thanks, okay, man. Alec, what, what's the average uh, age for, uh, for the masters? I, you know. You're, you're putting me on the spot. I, I'm, well, I don't think I'm, it's a straight question. No, like Tim, I, I have no data other than a gut feeling of somewhere mid 20s. Um, I think sometimes, in particular in our transportation infrastructure engineering MSc, we get people that are coming with a bit more practical experience, so they might be kind of pushing into the 30 boundary, but it, it's definitely the mid, mid to late 20s is where I would put most of these, but I, uh, I ju judging ages is, is sometimes difficult. I think I think it's also uh, not part of our inclusivity approach. I think the last thing we do is when so when a student walks in is um, consider what age they are. Um, also, um, you know we we're very we're very inclusive at the university, and we actually um, support mature students. So, you know we've had students in their forties and fifties coming back because they've had a change of heart um, and they want to change a little bit um, of their career projection at that age and um, they've gone through the system as if they had picked it up when when they're 21 straight after their undergrad okay let's move on to the next question yep so the next question is my bachelor's is in mechanical engineering i have four years of prior work experience which course is better for me any suggestions please i think a lot of the courses um, across the faculty um, would be uh, possible. It depends on the individual, probably down to what modules the student did in their in their undergrad. If there was any electrical and electronic related uh, work, then that would open your electrical department MSCs. All of our masters in our mechanical engineering department should uh, be an option, and that is the mechanical engineering the additive ma uh, manufacturing engineering and 3D printing, the advanced materials um, MSc, as well as our um, MSc, well, the mechanical engineering has streams within it. So, um, and the human factors and ergonomics and the computer human interaction MSCs. So to kind of, kind of cut the answer short, I think it will, best be if you get in touch with us, uh, probably with a transcript um, and just a short CV on what you've done over the last uh, five years. And that will enable us to kind of narrow down your options and then you can go away and do um, some research into them. And um, if it helps, you can go onto our website and just look at the postgraduate courses available. Uh, we have just under 30 across the faculty. I would this, uh, I would discount our MARC courses if you haven't done architecture um, and you haven't done design from an architecture perspective and only look at the MSc options within that. Um, we might be able to send you the link now in the chat for our for, to, to be able to search for our postgraduate courses. Anything you'd like to add to that, um, Alec, Ishan or Tim? No. No, okay. So Jess, let's pick up the next one. Yep, so the last question is, can you please tell me more about the Electrical Engineering for Sustainable and Renewable Energy Masters course? What are the course details and fees as 
are there any scholarships available? Uh, right. In terms of course, the detail and the fee, I just put a link uh, uh, here, right? So can find all the, the details uh, in the in the page. You can see all the module you're going to choose, right? But if you have any further question in terms of uh, course detail, then you can you can always you know get you know e email us so we can provide further e information. The intense scholarship, Lucy. Yes, the same two scholarships will be available for all of our master's programmes, which are the Developing Solutions Scholarship and the South Asia Postgraduate Excellence Award, and they would also apply to this course. I'll also pop in the chat um, our team email address, which would come straight to me and Jess, so we would be able to put you in touch with any admissions tutors for any courses. If you've got any specific questions, you'd also be able to send our trans your transcript to us if you wanted any sort of advice on what courses would be appropriate for you. So I'll pop that in there now. Thanks. I think that's all the questions. Thank you, team. I think we have covered all the questions from the chat, bo chat box. Many thanks for answering all the questions so well uh, and sharing your knowledge with us. We are now moving towards the end of this seminar. I would request if you have any final words or uh, like to put forward for the audience who are watching us live right now. Um, who wants to go? <laughs> <laughs> Can I, I, I'll just say that I think, I, I mean, obviously, thank you to everyone for listening this morning and uh, hopefully it was helpful, but we've only had a very short period of time to introduce things to you today. So please do have a look on the website for the various departments and, and do get, don't be afraid to get in touch um, either with us or, or with the course directors. We're always very happy to answer questions and things. So, you know, please do send emails through. Um, if you do have specific questions, because it's big decisions you're making about where to study, what program to study on and so on. So it's better that you you get all of the information you need to help you make those decisions. Thank you very much, Tim. And, you know, we, we work really, really closely with SIUK. So, um, you know, and uh, our relationship um, has been going on for, for years now. So so use use them to to kind of counsel you to start off with. To kind of narrow down and exactly like tim said you know we're i mean you've met us today um we are normal humans um so if you know even if you want um, um a final like 10 minute 15 minute video call with a course director um as long as their work schedule allows them to to give up that time we can work towards that as an ex-international student i completely understand the anxiety and pressures of making a decision of moving countries, you know, moving into a new institution, and um, everything that comes along with it. So anything that we can offer you to, to smooth that process, we are here for that. Um, and we, we do give up a lot of our time to support you. So don't be afraid to get in touch with SIUK and say, you know what, I actually would like us to have a quick chat with someone from the University of Nottingham Faculty of Engineering. And those requests will go to the emails that Lucy has posted and they come to, to the team. And we are a family here, so don't, don't be afraid of us, please. Okay, Debika, I think that we can finish on that, unless uh, Jess, Lucy, you've got anything to add? No? Okay. So yeah, Debika, I think we'll finish on that in that case. Thank you so much for your kind words to all the audience. If you have any further question, please feel free to contact SIUK India offices. We'll be more than happy to help you. In the end, thank you so much for your valuable time today. Bye-bye. Take care.